Hey everybody, this is Mr. MathBlog and this lesson is using bar graphs. So don't forget all your lessons can be found at MrMathBlog.com. Okay, so there's our common core strand and our essential question is how can we read and interpret data in a bar graph? Okay, so a bar graph, you guys, I'll show you one in the next click right here. A bar graph uses these things called their bars to show data. So a scale of equally spaced numbers helps us read the numbers in each bar graph. So Here's a bar graph going to the right right here. So this bar graph uses these bars. So there's a bar, there's a bar, there's a bar, there's a bar. And then the scale down here of equally spaced. See, these are equally spaced right here. And they're going by twos on this. So as long as they're equally spaced right here. So what this describes is, now I'm going to go ahead and start reading here. The students on the track team made a bar graph to record the number of miles they ran last week. How many miles did John run? Okay, so uh, you might get a question that says underline the words that tell us where to find the information to answer the question. Well, that last uh, question was right here. How many miles did John run? So we're focusing on John's bar right here. Looks like Cat ran the most, by the way, but we're going to focus on John. And, and probably Pam ran the second most because her bar goes out the second furthest right there. Okay. So here's the bar right here. Now this uh, bar graph, it has a title. So the title tells uh, what the bar uh, graph is talking about. So this bar graph, here's the title. It's talking about the miles that were run last week by these people right here. Okay, and then down here is the number of miles down here. So the title up there is up there in, in purple, miles ran last week. Each bar graph is labeled with the student's name. So here's the student's names right here. Notice this says student right here. Okay, and then uh, the length of the bar tells how many miles each student ran. So here, Kat's bar goes out the farthest, and so she ran the furthest, and Dan ran the least, uh, looks like, right there. So the bars tell us how much each student ran. And the scale down at the bottom, here's the scale right here. The scale goes from 0 to 16, and they're going by 2s. 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16 right there. Nobody ran 16 miles last week, but we'll use that to continue. So find the bar for John. So here's John's bar right there, because it wanted to know how many miles did John run. So it ends at the 8 mark right there. So, John ran eight miles last week, okay? All right, so uh, explain how to read the bar that tells how many miles Pam ran, okay? So here's Pam right here, so she's in between uh, this eight and 10. Well, think of a number in between eight and 10, that would be nine. So Pam goes out between eight and 10, or which is nine miles, so Pam ran nine miles right there. Okay, so how many miles did Dan run? Okay, so Dan is up here. Dan ran six miles last week. All right, who ran four fewer miles than Cat? Well, Cat ran 12 miles, so uh, 12 minus four is eight. So who ends in eight right here? John does. So John uh, ran four few miles than, than Cat did. What if Pam runs five more miles? Okay, so here's Pam. We're going to, she's at nine right here. So what if she runs uh, five more miles? How many miles will she have run? Well, nine plus five is 14 miles right there. And then this says shade the graph to show how many miles this would be or how many miles she ran. So we're going to go all the way out to 14. So we'll extend this out, uh, this bar graph out to here, and then we'll shade it in. Okay, so there it is, and let's shade it in. There's, there would have been Pam if she would have ran five more miles right there. Okay, so these bar graphs show the same data. So this horizontal bar graph over here, uh, horizontal, it's going, uh, these bars are going horizontal. Uh, and the bars go across from left to right, and then the length of the bar shows the, uh, shows the number right here. So, for example, this color right here, blue, uh, the number of students would have been 24 right here. Okay, this is called a vertical bar graph over here. In a vertical bar graph, the bars go up from the bottom, and the heights of the bar show the number. Okay, so let's do blue again. So this blue right here still goes up to 24. Okay, so this 24 on the horizontal is the same as this one going up to 24 right here. Okay, here's the, the number of students right here, but on a vertical graph, the number of students go up this way right here. Okay, so uh, let's see. So what does each space between the numbers represent? Okay, well, each space uh, represents uh, four students right here. Okay, uh, uh, 
uh, yeah, counts for four students. And then so a half a space would be count for just two students right here. Okay, so right here would be uh, six students. So I'd add two to four right there. And then eight plus two would be ten. So a half a space would be two students right there. Okay, so what do you think? Uh, why do you think the scale from zero to twenty-eight goes by fours instead of by ones? Okay, well, if this is 28 right here, if we did this by ones, our, our uh, horizontal bar graph would go way out here to 28 if we counted them by ones. If this was one, this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we'd have to keep going. It'd go off this chart over here. It would be too big. Okay, or if we went up by ones right here, uh, zero, one, two, three, four, five five, six, seven. So it would go up on top of the, uh, the ceiling right there. So it would take up too much room basically. So, uh, and then uh, what other scale could we use? Well, we could have used uh, counted by threes or by fives. It doesn't matter as long as you make the same thing right there. Hey, look at this bar graph right there. Take care you guys.